Welcome to the Forge Truth Podcast, where we are building great men as God defines greatness. Forge is a movement of men with a mission to help all men realize they're the deeply beloved, redeemed sons of the Most High God. I'm your producer, Zach, and I'm here to discuss the issues that affect men the most with our two hosts, Dr. Pete Allenson, lifelong pastor and leader of Forge, and Jason Quinones, Bishop of Core Faith Church in Oviedo, Florida. Men, welcome to the show. Hey! We're, it's good to be back, and as we uh, see over there, we got a guy with a broken hand. <laughs> I mean, your hand isn't broken, is no, it? Your thumb? It, no, it feels broken though. It does. It does. We. Um, I. Uh, Are you milking it at home and everything and everywhere you go? Not intentionally. Okay. <laughs> not intentionally, but it. You know, it. It's funny. I never realized how much I use my left hand. Yeah. For stuff, I was trying to uh, open the communion on Sunday. And it was hilarious how long it took me to open the communion just because <laughs> I couldn't do anything. But yeah. So I, uh, what happened? What caused that? Well, um, I was skiing in Colorado. Yeah. And literally, I had some really good spills. And I wish that I could say that this was connected to a really good fall. But I was actually doing probably less than one mile an hour. And I was just trying to do a little turn. And my right foot got caught in some snow. And I fell forward. And yeah. Wrapped a pole around your, was your thumb, yeah, huh? Yeah, the, the ski pole and my hand and everything. So, yeah, but I'm better, though. I, I You know, I'm getting better, I guess. So we'll see. Good, good. Well, I hope it heals up fast. Um, today we have a special guest in the studio with us. Jason, why don't you introduce them? Yeah, so this is the, the third female that we have had on our Forge Truth podcast, which is pretty cool. And she is my firstborn. She's the one that made me a daddy. And I just want you guys to know that I did pay her before we came so that way she would not throw any dirt on me. But oh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, Alexis Elaine Quinones, welcome to the Forge Truth Podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's so good to have her here. I mean, and um, we're, we're going to have fun with this. And yeah. feel free to throw your dad under the bus <laughs> at any time. Uh, no, we, we love your dad and, and your mom. You come from a very wow. good family. And uh, it's been a privilege for me to see you. I've known you for several years now to see yeah. you grow up into the fine young lady that you are now. And uh, tell, tell, why, tell, us, um, tell us what you're doing right now, uh, how old you are right now, and what you're doing. So I am currently 22. It's mm. terrible. Oh my <laughs> Getting <goodness>. old. <laughs> um, so I'm 22. I'm currently working as a scribe at a medical oncology clinic um, with a doctor who specializes in melanoma, which is skin cancer, and sarcoma, which is like another type of cancer as well. Mm. So what are your goals? What are, you, you're already a graduate of, of UCF here in Central Florida. Yes. And your major was? Preclinical Health Sciences. Okay. Yes. So you're headed toward? I am currently studying for my MCAT, so the entry exam for medical school, um, so the way I can apply this upcoming cycle in the summer. Wow. Yes. Wow. You got to study for MCATs? I, I mean, I, I guess I... Is that right, uh, Zach? I mean, do you yeah, know that? Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're hard. I, yeah. I, get, yeah. I mean, I would uh, suspect yeah. they're hard. So how many hours do you put into studying for that? So, I mean, you definitely need quite a few hours. I have a program that I'm in, so it's, like, supposed to be, like, six days a week and then a few hours there each day. I'm not always perfect about getting those few hours in, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And the MCAT is what? Biology? Is it chemistry? Yeah, so it's all the things forever that you have ever learned in school, literally. It's chemistry, biology, psychology, biochemistry, organic chemistry, physics. So it's like a big conglomerate of every single thing you've learned, like from day one of college all the way to the time that you graduated, literally. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop, were those your subjects? I mean, no, I just wanted you, you all to know she's much smarter than I am. Oh. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that I have one thing that I need to master, and that's the Word of God. Yeah, <laughs> right, so right, right. I have the Holy Spirit who helps me with that, and it's not just me. But yeah, she is, she, she, she is a, an envious for me, an envious student because she is so disciplined when it comes to study, and she actually helped me because I'm still 
I have to say that I'm still working on my master's. And she came to me and she said, Dad, you know, you can study like this. And she gave me a whole study plan. I didn't follow it. However, oh. it was a great plan. And she is, a, is an example because she graduated um, doing a great job and she studies hard. So, yeah, very that, smart. Very that's smart. good. Those weren't my subjects. Yeah. Uh, math, uh, math, oh. science, none of those were my <laughs> subjects. I, I, I took none of that. <laughs> Did you, Zach, have you done any of that stuff? Uh, well, I, physics was kind of my thing. I was a physics major for a while in college. I only wow. I switched because I, I found out it was a five-year program. Two and a half years <laughs> in, I found out it was a five-year program, and I, I couldn't afford five years of college, so I switched to the uh, major that had the least number of credit hours so that I could graduate as quick as possible, Wow! which turned out to be media communication. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, so I've always loved physics, but I've never taken biology in my life. Mm. Um, so not even like not, I, mean, not I, in I high took school. it in high school. No, instead of high school, you were supposed to, but uh, there's one elective science you could take instead of biology, and it was aviation. So and you took that. I took plane class. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I know nothing about uh, mitosis or anything <laughs> like that. Yes. Well, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> that's what we all learn if we know one thing. Okay. That's like the big joke. The, the, the is mitochondria. The, mitochondria the is the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell. Yes. Boy. Ask I, any STEM major that. They'll know it. They will know it <laughs> off the top of their head. That's awesome. all we know about biology. Well, that's, that's good. All right. So here's a question. Did you get good grades in school growing up? I did. Yes. Good. Yes. So that, that you're a good student, but you always worked hard to get good grades. Well... No. <laughs> um, I honestly, so I know how to study well, right? I could put that study plan together. Okay, okay. But in high school, I really did not study that much. Um, wow. I don't know. I just like, if I did my homework and I knew what was going on, I usually did okay. And I had like one teacher in particular that like, that really frustrated her because me and my friend, like we really didn't study and like we goofed off a little bit in class, but it was like a difficult one and we still did well. And so she would get so mad about that. So no, I kind of had to learn, like relearn to study in college because in college I really couldn't get away with that. So that was kind of a struggle for me wow. to learn to actually be like studying, like not just my homework. That wasn't enough. Ah, I love that. I love that. Did you know that you paid for this good Christian school that she went? She wasn't doing her work. She was playing around in class. This model yeah. pastor's daughter. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that because, you know, the, as parents, right, you're looking at one thing, the report card. And as yeah. long as the report card says good grades, you're good. Your your bottom line. Yeah. And yeah. she and you know she knew she knew how to get right to the line, right? Like so, she never got a demerit. She never got in trouble. She just frustrated her teacher a little bit. So that's cool. I love I, it. I can live with it. that. There's a there's a principle in parenting that is that is simply this: the life your kids are living is not the 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 life you think they're living. <laughs> <laughs> they really are doing. They are separate from us, yeah, and they're yeah. not. They're not living. Well, anyway, <laughs> without going into details, <laughs> yeah. what what percentage did he understand what was going on in your life growing mm. up? Like in high school? Oh yeah, sure. In, I don't know. I mean, okay, really, honestly, I'm not sure that quote really applies to me because I'm like. I'm so, like, chill. Like, I really did, like, whatever he thought I was doing, there is a very, very high likelihood that's exactly what I was doing. Yeah, I see. yeah, so, okay. So, I mean, I feel like you pretty much knew what was going on. You know, you knew if I was, like, in theater or, yeah. you know, if I was at, like, my tutoring. There was one class that was, like, trying to kill me in high school. And it was, like, my <laughs> senior year, and it was calculus. And, like, I almost died, like, many times, <laughs> literally. And, yeah, yeah, I feel like you knew pretty much what was going on. Well, he's a pretty, he's a yeah. pretty... Pretty top drawer dad. Yeah, yeah and you know. he knows what he knows what's up. That's good. Well, I, you know, and I always say this. You know, with Alexis, she is she is the to me. She's always been the epitome of of grace mm. and God and God helping us with our parenting. Mm. Um, we used to with Alexis. We would go to restaurants. We would get compliments about her, and people would be like, "Man, she's so quiet." And she doesn't, you know, do anything. And, you know, people would have to go take their kids to go home and take naps. And I was like, what is wrong with y'all like this? Like, your kids need to just just work around your schedule. I mean, Alexis was with us when we were in youth ministry. She was there. You know, we're coming out late on Friday nights and, uh. you know, bringing her home and everything was all good. 
Um, and then, uh, and then Josiah came into our lives. Yeah. And we realized that we are not amazing parents. <laughs> Alexis was an amazing child. And because, uh, you know, Josiah was totally different. Like just we were not getting compliments about Josiah in the in the restaurants. We would sit in the back booth somewhere like we need to be against the wall. So mm. that way he cannot look over. Um, but he's amazing anyway. But nonetheless, but Alexis has always been a pretty, a pretty low key and amazing kid. And, you know, I remember I remember hearing one day I remember telling her this and it kind of broke her heart. But I was listening to somebody on parent on parenting, and he said, "You know, your kids will break your heart one day." Mm. And I think you remember this. I do. And I think she was in like tenth <laughs> grade, and we were having this conversation, and she like her eyes watered up, and she was like, "Dad, how could you think I'm going to break your heart one day?" And mm. I'm like, "Well, I hope not." And so, hey, she's twenty twenty two, right? Yes. And 22. she hasn't done it yet, you know. Oh. So, yeah. Well, daddy, daddy, daughter, great. Of course, Elaine, you're you you have a great wife too. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, I think for dads, we need to hear we need to hear that every one of our kids is different. Yeah. And and that our temperaments, their temperaments are different. Yeah. And and each kid, covenant child, mm -hmm. whether whatever your denomination, if you're right. if you're raised in a Christian family, one way of looking at them is calling them the children of the covenant. Yeah. Most of them come back to, to following Jesus. Right. Uh, just stick with it. Never right. give up. Yeah. And, uh, and, but boys do cause a lot of challenges at the younger levels. And, uh, yeah. anyway, you get, you get the, the, the easy daughter of the, of the year <laughs> award. That's wonderful. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, you, it was easy for him to have you as a daughter. I'm curious what it's like to be a pastor's kid to have, you know, uh, listeners of the podcast know Jason, yeah. uh, has a lot of wisdom to share and he's not shy about sharing it. And uh, I'm just curious for you, what's it like growing up under someone like that who has, uh, you know, position and role of authority at, at your church? A lot of people look up to him. What are the challenges with that for you? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think I'm definitely one of the more fortunate pastor's kids. I've had, you know, a fantastic experience in ministry, like my whole life. I've met lots of pastor's kids, and I feel like sometimes there's almost like a resentment mm -hmm. because, you know, there's such a high standard for like pastor's kids that, you know, this is not something you chose to do. You know, your parents are the ones in ministry. You're just kind of there. But honestly, I've always had an awesome time in ministry. I love serving, and I think he's always done a really awesome job of never forcing me to do something just because I'm his daughter. And I think that might be like a misconception because I do so much at our church that people have even made the comment to me, oh, you have to go work. You have to go do your pastor's kid thing. And I'm like, I'm not working. I'm just serving in my church. Like, I just enjoy it. And he's never forced me. And that has, we've had fights about it too, because I'm like, why would you not think of me to do this? Why would you not <laughs> ask me to do it? I want to. And he's like, I just, I thought you were maybe busy with like the 30 other things you're doing over here. And I'm like, no, I want to do it. I want to do it. So I think definitely it's, it's been a great experience for me. I've never really felt that pressure. Like I have to do X, Y, and Z to be like the perfect pastor's kid. I kind of just, he let me find my way and figure out what I like to do, which we have learned is all the behind the scenes stuff. I don't need anyone to see me do anything. I'm good if I like stay all the way in the back and you don't know I'm there, but things are getting done. That's kind of my, where I thrive. Yeah, that's good. And it's good that you knew, you know, it's good that, that Bishop didn't force you. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, a real good message for pastors. I think it's a good message for all of our men to hear, to tell their pastors in a sense that if you're forcing your kids, don't do that. Right. And, and, and if you're a man member of a local church, uh, don't expect the kids or the wife of the pastor to, to fit into one particular role. Right. Um, and different denominations have different ideas of what their pastor's wife or their kids should do. Don't do that. Yeah. Guys, give them grace and let them find their space because this is the testimony that we really want pastor's kids to have. I had a good experience being raised in a church. Right. Yeah. I would love to hear you talk a little bit more about the joy of serving mm. at your church. Yeah. Um, because I think some people think that serving is an, another obligation or another chore. Um, but it sounds from what you said that serving at your church is really a joy to you. And I just love to know more about like how you built that attitude and, and what role it serves in your life. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, for me, you know, we don't have like a ton of family in Florida. Um, So, and I've grown up with a lot of the people in our church and they've seen me grow up. So I can say without like any doubt in my mind, you know, the people in my church, they're my family. Mm. And I am, you can ask my dad, I'm like an undercover nurturer. Like I seem like a little cold sometimes, but really I just want to take care of you. And for me, like serving in my church is taking care of my family. You know, I want to make sure that they have everything they need and that they're all served and they know, you know, if I need something, I know I can go to Alexis, you know, like there's a reason I sit in like the back row, right? Like you might think like, oh, there's the pastor's daughter in the back row so she can goof off. No, it's actually very strategic. I sit in the back row because I'm in and out a lot. You know, people are coming to me for stuff because they know, right? Like Alexis will take care of it. And so, I mean, I just love it. You know, I love taking care of them and really serving them. You know, that's how, you know, I show my love, right? Like I was supposed to bring some like pumpkin bread today or something (laughs) but I slept in so I will send something for you guys but like right (laughs) that's just like my nature you know I just love to take care of people and that's you know that's my name right like Alexis means helper of mankind and I really yes I really try to live that out because I really enjoy it and it brings me so much joy I remember when when I was in South Africa over the summer and I wasn't in church for like five weeks And oh my goodness, every Sunday was like dreadful. I was like, I don't get to go to church. I don't get to make my coffee in the morning for everyone. I don't get to do all my stuff. Like that was the hardest part, like not being able to like serve everyone. And I, you would have thought there were other things that were difficult, but that was really it for me. Like I didn't get to be with my family. Wow. I love it. I think that's the way the body of Christ ought to be. Um, And praise the Lord. Praise. I mean, that is wonderful. That's Wow. So, you know, that, that also raises the issue that we, that we need to let our, our children, help our children find their spiritual gifts and where they fit within the church. That's a part of parenting. Yeah. And um, the church is a community. By the way, Zach, we did a survey of our, of our Forge guys today uh, on Tuesday morning, 155 guys. Yep. Um, how many go to church on a regular basis out of that 155? So we asked 155 guys, how often you go to church? Uh, are, do you attend a local church? Yes, no, or occasionally. Only three said no. Only three By said no. By and large, they are going to church. Isn't that amazing? Which is so great. Uh, it's, a, it's a testament for what we kind of like teach over and over at Forge, the importance of the local church, the importance of leading uh, in your community, in your church. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, it was great confirmation to see that our guys are going to church. They're involved. They're volunteering. They're serving in their church. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So stay involved, get involved, and raise your kids right within the context of the local church. Yeah. What's it like having your daughter uh, so involved in the life of your church, Bishop? I mean, that's that's an amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a joy to, to serve beside her. She's absolutely uh, dependable. You know, one thing, I, you know, I, I, my wife and I, we always joke about who named Alexis, and... Um, I will always take credit for that. However, <laughs> my, my wife did does remind me often that a few weeks before I would, came up with the brilliant idea of the name Alexis, the helper of mankind, that she had already suggested that name. So there it is. But um, one thing that I'll say is, you know, for, with Alexis, and I, and I strive like hard. I mean, I used to talk to the, to the kids' ministry teachers, and I would, I would always make sure that I was like, listen, don't, don't treat my daughter like she's the pastor's kid. Don't make her feel any kind of way because I don't want her to feel like there's this higher standard for her or there's this pressure on her to perform or know things. So that was a big thing, you know, growing growing up with her and, you know, seeing her, her grow in her faith and just seeing her desire, you know, she, I mean, like she says, she likes to serve in the background. Uh, every once in a while, I get her to sing with me and leading worship because she has a oh. beautiful voice. Ah. And um, so we did that. You know, we've done that a couple of times. She fights me tooth and nail on that one. But um, I, I've never had seen you sing when I was there. So yeah. next time. Next time. Next, next time, time you come, we're going to, okay. I'm going to make sure she does a solo. Great. And, and <laughs> oh. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. None at all. But but it is, but it, it is a joy to see her serve and to just know her heart. I mean, she, she has a heart for excellence. Whenever, you know, something happens, um, I always, I'm, I'm always confident 
that I don't have to worry about anything when I'm have to preach, like mm -hmm. I gotta come out and deal with something because I know that Alexis is gonna be back there and she's kind of monitoring things and if she needs to step into an area, you know, she'll step into pretty much any role other than preaching. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Oh, wow. Okay, so as you look ahead and as you look ahead of going into the okay, okay, we're gonna pray for the MCATs. You yeah. you're gonna you're you're studying now. When will you take the MCATs? So I'm scheduled in May. I think it's the eleventh. Okay. I believe the eleventh. May eleventh this year. Yes. So you've been studying for how many months on this? Okay, well, <laughs> I have not done a fantastic job of studying consistently. As we have seen in my track history, I <laughs> kind of don't like Spending studying. too much time with your friends, right? Yeah, of course, you know, <laughs> procrastinating. But I have been studying since, like, January. Okay. For it. Yeah. Okay. So what, you pass that then, then you, and you can't really apply to medical schools until you pass the med ca MCATs, is that right? So there's not like a passing necessarily. It's like you get a certain score and you score on like a percentile. So like 80, 90, 99%. Okay, okay. So like the better your score, the more like open doors you have, for instance. Okay. Like the better colleges that you could get into and the more options you have um but i mean you could take it and bomb it and still apply you're just probably not going to get accepted uh-huh right 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 yeah okay so passing it is core yeah. is important yeah. and then and then apply and then see what happens yeah. all right where what, what do you want to do what field of medicine intrigues you yeah so the ultimate goal is to be a dermatologist mm. yes in the sunshine mm. state. In the sunshine. In Florida, <laughs> it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be. Yeah. Wow. I know. I went in. I had a precancerous thing. I took it off. It kind of bothered me because he saw. He goes, "Yeah, no big deal. It's precancerous. Precancerous. <laughs> you know, is it no big deal? Come on." That. And then he just sprayed some stuff, and he goes, "Yeah." And he goes, "You'll be good in about two weeks," and it was gone in two weeks. So I was like, "This is too simple." But there's a lot of of. I mean, in Florida, gosh, I mean, it's, that's a great place to be. Yes. So what, where do they check? You know, I mean, <laughs> where, where can you get, I mean, you can get it on your skins. What, what, right. what are the kinds of cancers that we, the skin cancers that we? Yes. Okay. Well, let me preface this. I am not a medical professional. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're it's having just fun my with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What I've learned from my job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, wait, wait. So what is your job? So that way they know like yes. what you're talking about. So I am a scribe at a medical oncology clinic right. and he specializes in melanoma, which is skin cancer. Okay. Um, so I see the stuff that the dermatologist sends to us. Yeah. You know, we hear, he says a lot, you know, the dermatologist 99% of the time, it's just a little precancerous. He's not concerned. But what we see every day is like the people that have gone from precancerous to it's full blown, like melanoma mm. on their skin. You know, they have lesions there. Um, so when you go to the dermatologist, they should do like a full body skin check, especially if you have lots of sun exposure. Um, and you know, if you have darker complexion, we see it more so on the palms of your hand and the soles of your feet, which is very interesting because I feel like that doesn't get much sun. Like who's baking the bottom of their feet, you know, in right? the palms right. of their hands, like that's where we sunbathe. But it's just, it's just like that. How, how what would it look like if I had it on the palms of my hands or on the soles of my feet? What what is it? So, would it be a yeah. mark? A, yeah. just a dark mark? It's usually something? like a pigmented lesion. Like it might have like abnormal borders. So like a mole is like very circular, you yeah. know. But like it'll have like abnormal borders, maybe some different coloring. <laughs> I'm looking at my hand. <laughs> I think you're Zach, okay. Check your hands. Yeah. This this could be our opportunity. The Forge podcast could save a life today. Yeah, yes. we could. That's yeah. absolutely right. Look at, look at the bottom of your feet. Look at your hands. Yes. Yes. But I'm not flexible enough to look at the bottom of my feet. You're going to have to have your, you're gonna have have your wife do it. Get a partner. Yeah, yeah. yeah check it out. Yeah. Let's, let's save some lives or today. Or a mirror, yeah. right? And check. Yeah. The, the wives are going to be highly upset with us because all the guys are going to hear this and be like, babe, I need you to check my feet, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, ticked off wives. Right. Yeah, you know. uh, but but that's, that's just an amazing... Uh, reality too yeah so mel does melanoma does it grow quickly is it fast i mean uh, well, what you know now we're not ask yeah. asking you to be doctors <laughs> yet you know no, but i you know it kind of varies from what i've seen so we've had some patients come in and they've had this like lesion for years huh. and they don't think anything of it 
and then like all of a sudden it just like starts growing like rapidly huh. or they decide that they care about it and they want to go in and see a dermatologist. Um, and then sometimes it just happens really quickly. You know, we've had some people that are like, yeah, I noticed this thing growing that like super fast in like three weeks and they go to like the ER for it because they think something is like really, really wrong. And, you know, of course we find out it's like melanoma. So something yeah. is wrong, but it can happen really quickly or it can just be a really slow growing, you know, type of thing. It really varies, honestly. Yeah, yeah. What motivated you to want to be a dermatologist? Um, so I knew that I, I've known since I was in like fifth grade that I wanted to go into the medical field. Um, it kind of varied. I wanted to be like an ER doctor. And then I was like, whoa, like that's a lot. I would like to have holidays off and not work in the evenings or the weekends. You know, Ooh. quality of okay. life, okay, yeah. work balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then I had the opportunity to do an internship at a local dermatologist when I was in high school. And I just had like the time of my life. I was like, this is amazing. You know, you're doing the full body skin checks, you're doing biopsies, and you're really getting to, you know, help people with this preventative care, you know, because a lot of times when I see it at work, it's like because things have gotten out of hand and they just haven't kept up with it. But you're in a position here as a dermatologist to be like the front lines, like, hey, let's catch this early. So that way, mm. you know, you're not having to go, you know, undergo all of this treatment and, you know, it could be something really crazy. So I really love the idea of being able to help them, you know, at the first point of contact, let's take care of it in the beginning. I love that. So it really is that helper, that helper strain uh, in you that wants to help, serve, and boy, we need people like that in the medical community these days. And you're going to be really be Jesus' um, uh, voice and hands to help uh, in that in that kind of a role. I'm glad you're going into that that role. That's great. We're going to be praying you through those next steps. Of course, medical school will be a piece of cake. <laughs> Once you get in, it'll be a piece of cake, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Now, finally, I, I think, you know, everyone at home wants to get to know uh, Jason better. And, and I think it, it would be great if you could share some unique insight into, into who your father is. What does everyone need to know about him that, mm. that they wouldn't have heard already on the podcast? Mm. Mm. Okay, well, full disclosure, I have not listened to the podcast because I was I was trying to not psych myself out, okay? Because as we've learned today, I like to be in the background and not in front of people. So I was like, I will right. not listen and get nervous. Let me see what to know about my dad. He's the best. I love him. But um, he's actually a lot more sensitive than you might think. Mm. So things do hurt his feelings, even if he does not show it to you. He does get hurt, you know, obviously church hurt is a thing, but like, I think as a pastor, you're sometimes like a little bit of a punching bag, um, for people who, you know, come and go and you develop those relationships sometimes. Like, you know, we all have those friendships that you just click and he's not immune to that. And so, you know, when people just like get up and leave or, you know, whatever happens, that stuff hurts him, you know, whether he's going to show it or tell you, it does hurt him. So I think mm -hmm. just remember, you know, your pastors are people too. And when people do stuff and it hurts you, it hurts them just the same, if not more, because they really, really, really want you to like succeed and like grow closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's true. He's tough and tender. <laughs> and uh, no, I love that about you, Jason. And you know, it is true that every pastor, you know, when somebody says, don't take this personally, <laughs> we do because our work is personal. It's hard not to uh, take things personally, but we do have to get used to the fact that people come and go and um, some people don't like us or they leave for other reasons mm -hmm. that are not really related to us. Right. And, uh, but uh, the ministry is hard. So pray for your pastor mm -hmm. and, uh, and you do have a, a deep heart and we love that about you. We love that about you. Well, Alexis, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been great having you. And uh, it, uh, clearly, uh, Jason has either raised a great daughter or was given a great daughter. Um, probably a combination of both. Um, I want to thank everyone at home for listening to this episode of the Forge Truth podcast. If you want to learn more about the Forge movement, you can check out our website at forgetruth.com. Please share this episode with a friend if you th think that they would enjoy it. Um, it helps us get new listeners um, to the Forge podcast. 
Uh, why don't we leave a challenge for our listeners from Pete today? All right. Well, what a privilege it is to see daddy and daughter and the daughter that made Bishop a daddy the first time. And this is, this is, uh, pulls our, our heart strings, Zach and me too, because we both have daughters and sons. And what a privilege, men, it is to be a daddy. And so, so remember, once you're a daddy, you're always a daddy. And continue to pour into that role. Pray for your daughters. Pray for your sons. Be engaged and allow the Lord Jesus Christ to continue to develop you as you pour into your wonderful gifts that God has given you. 